Hi and welcome to a short video about TDR Simulate. In this video we will cover the use of Simulate as an effect and mixing tool. We will also shed some light on the most important questions and myths concerning mastering for vinyl. Question number one. How much music fits on a record? The answer is, it depends on the music. Let us start from the basics. A typical LP has a diameter of 12 inches and it rotates at a constant speed of 33 and a third revolutions per minute. So one line lasts 1.8 seconds and a 20 minute side requires 666 lines. The actual space consumption is variable, calculated line per line during the cut in real time using a special device called a pitch processor. We want to cut as loud as possible to stay away from noise. Louder, audio consumes more space, therefore less lines will fit on the record. Unfortunately, the only way to check the maximum available time and cutting level is to make multiple test runs from beginning to the end with a pitch processor in real time and see if it fits. Fortunately, we have a useful tool to simulate this process much faster. Question number two. How does that sound from vinyl? The answer is, it depends on the pickup. The reading speed of the stylus on the outer diameter is much faster than on the inner diameter. If you compare it with tape, the speed would go down from 20 inches per second to only seven and a half. As a consequence, the sound quality progressively decreases. We refer to this as diameter loss, and it is significant. Effect number one is high frequency loss. The waves become more and more squeezed relative to the stylus size, and very small waves get completely eaten. Effect number two is distortion. Some study cannot read the squeezed waves at the inner diameters properly and start jumping over them. Harmonics are created in the pickup. This is good because it can compensate for the lack of high frequencies and fool the listener into thinking that the high end is still there. But too much distortion sounds harsh. It depends very much on the pickup and the diameter. A skilled cutting engineer can balance these issues using test cuts, filtering and dynamic processing. Can we understand, measure and predict that and make good decisions early in mixing and mastering using digital test cuts? Absolutely. Question number three. Does the bass have to be mono? The answer is, it depends on how the stylus moves. Stylus motion for bass signals is a lot greater than for higher frequencies. For a mono signal, it moves left-right, which we call lateral. For a stereo signal, it also moves vertically up and down. The groove becomes wider as the stylus goes deeper. Stereo bass is causing very deep grooves. What are the problems? Number one, space consumption. Deep grooves consume a lot of space, so less time and level can be cut. Number two, physical limits. Even if space consumption is not an issue, you cannot go endlessly deep. There are physical limits in the cut and the subsequent steps of the record production that must not be exceeded. Number three, sound. Distortion is a lot worse for vertical stereo signals than for lateral mono signals. Stereo bass can distort very early. It may seem like a suitable solution to enforce a general law of making the bass mono below 300 Hz on a vinyl master to avoid these issues completely. This is brute. A more gentle treatment will often suffice to stay within limits, but Without a tool, you cannot predict the groove and choose what is useful and appropriate. Fortunately, we have the right tool for the task and it's free. Question number four. What is sibilance and when is it harmful? The answer is, it depends on level. 
Sibilance refers to high-frequency content in music, such as strong S sounds in vocals and cymbals. The longer the high frequency lasts, the more current goes to the cutter head. This leads to high temperature, which can burn the coils. The circuit breaker that should be protecting the gear may fail. Repair can take months and cost thousands of dollars. It's advisable to use de-essers and low-pass filters, but the impact on these on a finished master is massive. Used early in mixing on specific tracks allows to do only as little as necessary. But how much is good enough? The effects on the cutter head increase dramatically with the cutting level. What is not an issue at minus 6 dB can be a disaster at plus 2. Utilize your preferred processing early in production and also use Simulate to measure the effect on the cutter head in a real scenario. In most cases, taming sibilance will also prevent unwanted pickup distortion. You can use Simulate's different pickup models to create digital test pressings, providing an insight into how the audio will sound on a vinyl record. That's all for now. Thank you for your attention.